Like I mentioned earlier, this is one of my favorite shoes of all time. And if Nike ever got in the business of retroing and re-releasing some of their older soccer shoes, this would definitely be number one on my list. What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you a video today that I knew I would be making for you six years ago. The remake of the Nike T90 Laser 1 that, as you can see, looks almost exactly like the original. For those that don't know, this was a limited edition remake, limited to 2,000 pairs, each individually numbered, as you can see there by the number on the heel. And it's a remake of the 2007 Nike T90 Laser 1 in the launch zest yellow and black colorway bearing a retail price of 250 US dollars. But that doesn't matter because they're sold out. Obviously Adidas has been really into the Predator remakes over the last couple of years and the T90 Laser 1 remake is Nike's response to that. And as you can see, next to an OG pair, they're almost identical. So what I wanna do in today's video is take a closer look at the Laser 1 remakes, compare them to the originals, talk about why they are one of my childhood favorites, and of course, take a look at how they fit and feel on feet. So if you wanna learn more, please stick around, watch the entire video. And like I mentioned, this was a limited edition release that has sold out. So unfortunately, there's really nowhere to buy them unless you go into the resale market. However, if you wanna see some detailed pictures of the remake, the link to the review page on my website is down below in the description. By the way, if you guys do end up enjoying this video and perhaps would like to see more reviews of older boots please support this one with a like and if you're new here watching for the first time and don't want to miss out on future content from me some of which i've already predicted in past videos of course please hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live let's start with the extras that are special because this is a limited edition release you're going to notice that it does come in an all black nike box with the signature t90 laser 190 logo in gloss black on the lid, which is gloss logos around the other edges of the box. And then if you wanna get a look at the label, there it is. Also included with the remakes is a remake of the OG string bag that you'll notice is black on black in color with the same 90 branding there on the front, a red swoosh as well. The front part of the bag being made out of the regular kind of string bag material we're used to seeing from Nike, black strings, but the back of the bag is actually made from a thin mesh material that you can see through. I have to admit the string bag is actually pretty cool, but because this is the number one source of string bag reviews on the internet, I have to compare it to the original that I have right here. Again, black on black with the red swoosh. You can see the little rings at the bottom of the string bag are actually more of a gold color rather than a black. And the back of the bag is actually made out of mesh, which is why they did it on the remake as well. But what you'll notice is that the mesh is padded and much thicker on the original versus the remake where you can't actually see through the bag whatsoever. This is actually one of the better quality string bags Nike has ever made. And as far as I'm aware, this is the only string bag Nike ever produced with the mesh backing. So it's cool that they did it on the remake, which is why this gets a string bag rating of 87.777 out of 90. I challenge you to find a more detailed string bag review on the internet. As for the boots themselves, the upper is almost a one-to-one -one remake of the original. There are some very small differences that I'll point out for you in today's video, but for the most part, if you had a pair of original Laser 1s, if you get the remakes, they're going to fit and feel surprisingly similar. Quick story about the Laser 1, and if you watch the Boot Nerds podcast, which you should be subscribed to if you're not already, you may have already heard this, but the T90 Laser 1 was the first top end boot that I got as a kid right when it came out and I was just super pumped about them. They came out in 2007 and it's one of those boots that was unveiled but didn't actually get released to the public until like a month after. So everyone knew they were coming, you just couldn't buy them yet. And you have to keep in mind as well that the T90 Laser 1 was really a far departure from what the T90 line had been up until that point because this is really the first one where Nike truly went at the Predator line from Adidas with big rubber striking elements, which you obviously have here with this large kind of shot shield here across the top of the foot. So I went to my local soccer store and I pre-ordered a pair waiting for them to arrive. Super, super excited, could not wait. And I called that store 
every single day for two weeks straight until the boots finally showed up. I can tell that the owner was very, very annoyed every single time that I called, but it didn't matter to me. I was young at the time. I just really wanted my boots. And when I got them, I thought they were the greatest thing ever. And that's really why it's one of my childhood favorites. It's just a boot that has a lot of sentimental value to me. I was a huge fan of Wayne Rooney and Fernando Torres at the time, who were both kind of headline players for this particular model. I would say Torres in particular, who actually wore them in white more so than in yellow, but I just thought it was the coolest looking boot. And it's one of those designs that even if you know nothing about football boots, it's just so easy to understand. Hit the ball right there. It's an actual target. Here's a rundown of the tech specs on the Laser 1. The upper is actually a Tajian synthetic in this particular colorway because there was a kangaroo leather option available for this boot as well. Never had a pair of those as a kid. The Tatian synthetic is obviously something that is very famous for being on the mercurial vapor line, although it's not on the vapor anymore, um, but it's not actually like the mercurial synthetic at all. It's not super thin. It's actually soft and has a little bit of a padded feel to it. And in comparison to the original, I would actually say that this time around, they've made it slightly softer. It actually feels better than the original in that regard and it basically is the surrounding material for the upper of this boot that you're really going to notice more so through the midfoot area because the star of the show is this giant striking element running across the entirety of the top of the foot basically anywhere where you would hit a ball you're going to come in contact with this giant striking element that is basically just a giant target on the one sweet spot on your foot that you want to hit the ball with, which was such a cool concept at the time. And it seemed like an obvious idea once everyone saw it, which is why I think this is such an iconic design from Nike, because it just makes so much sense. As far as the striking element itself is concerned, you obviously have more firm rubber, more solid rubber in the middle here, where you actually have the T90 logo, the center of the target, but you can see around the target, the little kind of outline, if you want to call it that, kind of leading into the bullseye, you actually have the rubber kind of curling a little bit, giving it that kind of swerve effect. And this is one of those boots that they would describe as a power boot, as a precision boot, as a swerve boot. It had all the same marketing elements that Adidas was doing with the Predators for years now, and it just made a lot of sense given the way that these boots look. Now, because of this weird striking element, you also had a very weird lacing system where this does have more or less a burrito style tongue, but one that actually works remarkably well. So you're gonna find that you have nylon straps attached to the actual shot shield itself, and then the outside edge of the Tajian synthetic upper here in zest yellow, kind of zigzags up the side, and then eventually kind of crosses over to the top two lacing positions that are just regular lace holes. And then you have your regular burrito style tongue that isn't fully attached on this side. So you can actually open it up pretty nicely when the laces are untied, as you guys will see later during the on feet portion of the video. Moving to the rear, obviously it does feature a low cut design, which is gonna be something that was very common at this point in time because mid, mid cut boots weren't really a thing. As far as the heel liner is concerned, they did exactly like the original in that you have the black on the sides and the red down the back all being a synthetic leather material. And they even included these little ankle bumps on either side, which was a very kind of quirky element of the heel liner on this particular boot. I'm not sure that it made any kind of difference, but extra padding I would say is always appreciated. And then you get to the heel area where they did add the external heel counter here for the remake. Although it does look a little bit cheap in comparison to the OG, made out of plastic. It does say total 90 there on the back. And then it does have the Zoom Air branding with what is supposed to be an actual actual kind of grill, but it's just kind of printed on the surface. And I have to say it does look a little bit cheap in comparison to everything else. You can see on the original that it was actually a grill because you can see the upper underneath it. It's basically a vent to nowhere. And that was another cool aspect of the Laser 1 in that you had the larger rubber strips to make up the element, but you can see in between all of those strips, you have this kind of grid pattern in rubber that actually allows air to pass through. The bottom of this shot shield, the base layer material was actually a mesh and then the underside of this tongue has little cutouts to allow for some form of ventilation. I never found it to be that effective, but it was a major angle of the marketing with this particular product. And if you really wanna go over all the little details, you can see the stitching here on the medial side. There's a little bit more of it on the originals. Another unique element of the Laser 1 that we don't really see from Nike anymore was the utilization of Zoom Air cushioning underneath the insole and on the remake they have included it the insole fully removable it features a mesh liner on top which is a little bit different and it does have 
the little kind of embossed design as we saw on the original insoles with of course the zoom branding there at the heel flip it over and you'll find that it's made from the standard yellow foam that we see from a lot of nike insoles and a very thin zoom air unit under the heel for a little bit of extra cushion that in all honesty you don't really notice however you can see that the og insoles are a little bit different and that they aren't mesh they're a synthetic leather liner on top and then the material of the insole is completely different and of course you'll notice that there's no zoom air unit on the heel just a little cutout for the zoom air unit and that's because on the originals the zoom air unit was actually attached to the sole plate base on the underside rather than to the insole. Another very cool design element of the T90 Laser 1 was the skeleton foot pattern that you found on the base of the sole plate, where the sole plate's made from a pretty standard plastic material for this period. It does have a little cutout through the middle there where you have some of that exposed Asian synthetic along with the T90 logo. And then of course, this was the stud pattern for the T90 Laser 1 at the time with blades under the heel and then pretty much all conical studs through the forefoot with some bladed support studs. The tooling for the sole plate and stud pattern on the remake, however, is a little bit different in that it is the now discontinued sole plate and stud pattern from the Hypervenom Phantom 3 that actually doesn't feel too far off the original sole plate and stud pattern, if I'm being honest. Out of everything they could have used, this was probably the best choice to be as close to the original as possible. And you can see because of the structure differences, it does change up the look quite a bit. You still have that skeleton foot pattern, which I think is a very cool design element. And keep in mind that that pattern is actually underneath the plastic. So this is not a wearable sole plate finish, if you were wondering. Obviously, it doesn't have the cutout through the middle. Instead, they've put a red Nike swoosh there and the 90 logo right there under the heel with, of course, the individual numbering right there. I love the fact that they have given each pair an individual number. That's something that I think is always cool with limited edition releases. And of course it has the FG Hypervenom Phantom 3 stud pattern, which brings us to the weight. Which one is lighter, the OGs or the remakes? Well, I'm gonna weigh them both for you today in real time, side by side. One thing to keep in mind though, is that my OG pair is a size nine US and the remakes that I have are a size 9.5 US. So technically half a size bigger, although that's not really gonna impact the results much. So we'll start with the original pair, as you can see by the sole plate, throw it on the scale, and you can see that they weigh in at about 10.6 ounces, the equivalent of 302 grams. We'll change the scale back to ounces, and we'll throw on the remake pair, which you can see here by the sole plate, and they weigh in at a slightly lighter 9.5 ounces, which is not an extreme weight loss, but it is something that is noticeable both on feet as well as in hand. And I think all of that weight comes down to the fact that this just has a more modern sole plate, more modern plastics, which are pretty much always gonna be a little bit lighter. So as expected, I've swapped out the stock black laces that I think look really good. And at first I threw in some yellow reflective SR4U replacement laces, and I just thought they looked weird. I'm gonna post a picture of that on my Instagram so you guys can judge for yourself. But anyways, I put some black reflective SR4U replacement laces. They're a little bit thinner than the regular ones that are pretty much exactly like the original, but they add the reflective bits and it maintains the black look, which I think ultimately does look the best on this particular boot. If you are interested in some replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. And yes, the lacing system is a little bit weird, but for those wondering, it's really not difficult to relace at all. So on feet, the Laser One remakes really feel just like the originals. Technically, it's on the Hypervenom Phantom 3 sole plate base, which you would think would modify the shape. But for the most part, the fit and overall feel of this boot stays very very true to that OG variation, which is excellent. And in all honesty, while they're bulkier than the average football boot that we have now in 2019, they're definitely very wearable by today's standards. If you're a fan of kind of the more classic power boot type of feel, and I really feel like this is one of the most streamlined T90 laser models that Nike ever made, because the Laser 2, while I'm a big fan of it, was extremely bulky and kind of shaped like a giant square. The Laser 3 was also very bulky, and then they kind of slimmed it down with the Laser 4. But as far as just pure design is concerned, this to me was the most streamlined. And with the burrito style tongue even, which I'm pretty much never a fan of, this just wraps your foot very, very nicely. It's not really going to get you that super tight fit because of the way the lacing system works. But for the most part, the fit and lockdown is very, very good. And again, very wearable by today's standards. As far as width is concerned, they're not overly wide. I would say if you have really wide feet, 
You might have a couple of issues, but for the most part, I think these will fit most people quite comfortably. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US and the fit and length is pretty much perfect. So if you are looking to get a pair, I'd recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So in conclusion, and unsurprisingly, I absolutely love these. I mean, I predicted their release about six years ago, so I can't be too surprised, but I have to say that Nike has really done an excellent job here. And while this doesn't have the original sole plate and stud pattern, which I would have loved to have seen, it doesn't really take away from the experience of the original. These feel about 99% true to that original pair that we got in 2007 that I'm holding right here in my hand. And that, to me, is the mark of a true remake. As much as the Predators are really cool from the Adidas brand and they've done a great job with the uppers, the sole plates and stud patterns are so far off the originals that it does take away a little bit from the experience. That's not quite the case with this particular model, although it's a lot more modern than some of those older Predator remakes as well. Definitely wearable by today's standards, if you're wondering. I really feel like this is one of the best striking elements ever to be featured on a pair of football boots. It's one of my all-time favorites. And I'm just really glad that Nike has done this. Hopefully they do more colorway releases in the future. And if you were lucky enough to get your hands on a pair, I hope you like them as much as I do because they're awesome. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please support it with a like. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. All my social media information linked down below in the description as well. So follow me there if you don't already. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.